Hello everyone, this is Crystal Jordan with Let's Get Crystal Clear and we're here on location at Sister Circle TV. I know you guys are familiar with it, you're checking out TV One and seeing my beautiful guest for today is the lovely Miss Quad. What's up girl? <laughs> What's up to the people? <laughs> What's up? Thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, I know people are really going to be excited to see Absolutely. you here in your ambiance, Sister Absolutely. Circle. Absolutely. This is our, another one of our studio sets here at Sister Circle, so yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Love to see African American women having conversation that impacts our community. Absolutely. Impacts us every day so kudos to you on yeah, that thank you absolutely now not only are we here at sister circle <laughs> but we have your book here yeah you got a lot going on miss <laughs> i'm very busy baby. You got a lot going on now we came here before we get into the book and and live laugh love and eat mm -hmm. we love that uh, we wanted to talk about health because yes. that's one of the main reasons that we wanted to come and talk yes, to you of course about your struggle with fibroids mm -hmm. you actually came out and and wanted to share that to help other women tell us a little bit about how you realized that that's something that you were dealing with with. Oh my God. Um, for the longest, I, I, I just really, to be honest with you, I ignored it. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah. ignored certain symptoms. I, I saw what was happening. There was a huge change in my body. Mm -hmm. um, I had a frequent urination. Mm -hmm. I had elongated periods. Yeah. Uh, my menstrual cycles were heavy. Mm -hmm. um, I had lower abdomen pain. I had yeah. lower back pain. I had um, weight gain. Yeah. I experienced uh, weight gain. and and. My stomach, it's normally, it's flat as the floor we walk on, and right. then all of a sudden, yes, <laughs> it's just normally snatched, you know, but I was snatched by some fibroids, yeah. I tell you that, so, yeah. you know, so all of those things, and I could remember one day, I, I was touching my stomach, and I and I felt something, I felt, felt a knot mm -hmm. in my stomach, and, and for me, I was like, man, you know, I hope this is, maybe this is um, a honey or something, maybe I picked up something and strained mm -hmm. myself, mm -hmm. but deep down inside, I kind of knew it was more serious than yeah. that, Yeah. and um when I, when I just, I couldn't, I, oh God, and an, another one. I, I used to have the pain, I mean, excruciating, yeah. unbearable pain. Mm -hmm. If I had to urinate, there was no holding it, yeah. okay? If I did not hurry up and get to the restroom, mm -hmm. it was I, couldn't, issue. I couldn't walk to wow. the restroom. I would wow. be literally kind of humped over mm -hmm. because the pain will be so, um, I guess painful, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I just would be in, in, in deep excruciating pain trying to, trying to, get, get, to the, get to the bathroom. Yeah. I think that's, it's huge. I don't want to, I, I want to make sure we don't just gloss over anything because I think a lot of times as women, number one, we don't talk about this. Mm -hmm. I've worked with OBGYNs in the past and one of the biggest issues with women, especially women of color, is that we don't, we feel a sense of shame or we want to keep things to ourselves. Or so you it, don't share things like even that. Even if it's not shame, you know what we do? We want to give the illusion that we're perfect. Everything is okay. And that everything is okay. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. what happens to us Absolutely. Too. I think yeah. even to ourselves, mm -hmm. because you don't want to acknowledge that something may be I mean, wrong. Oh, I, do I want to go out on, on national TV or in the media and say, yeah, my cycles were very heavy. And instead <laughs> of seven days, it was like 14. I was yeah. on for like but half a month. But that's, but that's, that's the reality, that's reality of it. And I, yeah. think that's what, I think that's how we can help other women. And that's why I'm so excited that you're doing this. Yeah, of course. I think every test you go through allows you to share that and especially when you're in a platform like yourself yeah. you share that other women that are dealing with it in their own little bubble get a chance to see it and realize you're not alone this is not something that you should be dealing with alone this is something that you should definitely go to your doctor about and not only that if we talk, if mm -hmm. we're exchanging knowledge and mm -hmm. communicating, mm -hmm. then now we're both learning from each other right. and we're bringing more insight. Right. It could be something that I've experienced mm -hmm. that you need to hear and need mm -hmm. to know and, and, and vice versa. Right. So and the conversation, it's just yes. it, it allows for strength. I know for myself, when I hear someone else has gone through something, it allows me to feel like I'm not by myself. And you can see, okay, because a lot of times you feel like if there's, if I'm dealing with it, there's something I might have done mm -hmm. wrong. There's something that that you know that, that I did to cause this to come. But you realize not with fibroids, not Fib at all, not not at all with fibroids. Fibroids affect over 70% of women mm -hmm. overall, and one in three African American women, one in four Caucasian women. So mm -hmm. it's nothing that you've done in particular. I want you to know that, and it's just an overgrowth of smooth muscle tissue that's in the in your uterus. In your also, uterus, yes. A lot of it is 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 health and what we eat and what we don't know that we're putting in our bodies that that is causing us issues later we did a part true. one with electric docs is is on this channel you guys please check that out because a lot of times there's things that we just have no idea we've been doing we've been putting in our bodies I mean, that are you, affecting you have us later. to also look at like the way that we were raised in terms mm -hmm. of the food that we were raised up mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. and you know I don't think back then you know no, uh, no our parents <laughs> knew like okay you know me eating this is gonna lead possibly mm -hmm. to that mm -hmm. you 
you know, and so it's important that we know that yeah. different foods that we can eat that can help shrink right. fibroids. If, and if you catch the them, the food is different. Early on. I think. I yeah. think the meat is different. I think a lot of the foods that we're eating are, is definitely not the same food that our grandparents were eating. You know, <laughs> yeah. and so it's a total, it's a total different thing. But I think just overall, you know. Um, being in tune with your body, listening to your body, stopping and paying attention. I know when I was, when my kids were little, if my daughter said something was going on with her stomach, I was immediately in tune. Yes. If my son, you know, cried different, I was immediately in tune. However, if you had I was, a belly I kept ache, going. you would keep yeah. going. So mm -hmm. here's the deal. It was very important for you to, to address the, ch the, the issues that your kids could have been experiencing, mm -hmm. but not, you're going to yeah. completely bypass yours. Yeah. But if you're not well, then how could you be there for them? Absolutely. It's kind of like I, what they say to, to us on the airplane. Mm -hmm. You secure your yourself first and yeah. then you and deal then with you, your children. And then you deal with your children. Yeah. As, and that's true in, in anything. I know some women that are very attentive to their spouse. And because we have this idea that we have to be this be the over, perfect wife, honey. overly nurturing woman in order to secure the man and in order to do my best to keep up with him. And you're making sure that you take care of him and any little thing that he says you're tuned into. But when it comes to yourself, you're not you're, you're not taking that type of care. So I think this is a very, very important conversation. Absolutely. Now, in addition to the fibroids, <clears throat> You cook. I do. I <laughs> enjoy cook. it too. You enjoy cooking. There's always the little bitty people like this that enjoy cooking. Isn't Why that you gotta say that? It's always the, the perfectly snatched me, people. Meanwhile, this little bitty person actually just went out on two weeks ago, did a whole juicing, juicing did for you do a, a week. Juice? I did. did. You? Okay. Week. And actually in that week, I lost five pounds, so I lost wow. a, a pound a day. So okay. I, was, I, I think for me, like I had, and I'm continuing to to lose even now. Mm -hmm. I think I was 134 mm -hmm. when I started. Now I, I, I got on a scale this morning. <laughs> I'm at 128. I'm back. Yes. I'm back. Yes. <laughs> but yes. no, I'm saying that to say it's all about what we eat. Right. You Absolutely. Know? So um, I'm not saying to stop eating. Mm -hmm. uh, I still do eat, and and I just did that juicing for one week to kind of kick it off. Mm -hmm. uh, and so now I've went back to eating. Right. Uh, and I'm still juicing a couple mm -hmm. of days a week. But even now when I'm eating, I'm watching a little bit more what yeah, I'm eating. Absolutely. And then the portions too. Mm -hmm. Now tell us about cooking with Ms. Quad. Honey, because everything, everything. looks very healthy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And well, very well, we, bright. Well, well, we got we got some healthy things, but you know, I, I am southern, and so you know, <laughs> she did. I am southern. Yes, so, I know. am very southern. So we, we have some things, uh, of course, that reflects my uh, background coming up in Memphis. Mm -hmm. But then also a lot of other dishes that I absolutely enjoy. Like I have one of my favorites in the book. It's the roasted Branzino, okay. and it's just so amazing. What is it's, that quad? It's a white fish. Okay, it's a white I was like, roasted, what is that? White, a white fish. <laughs> it sounded that very the Branzino. What yeah, it's that? it's really okay. good, and so okay. I. Fill it with lemons, capers, fennel, onion, okay. uh, and it's just so amazing. I wrap it and pop it in the oven, mm -hmm. let it sear in there for about 3, 40, okay. uh, uh, 20, 30 minutes, and it's just so much flavor. Put a mm -hmm. couple of capers on top of it. And healthy, too. That's and, and, also, and yeah. Exactly, it Dish is. So is that's healthy. one of the more healthier options that I do have. But mm -hmm. don't get it twisted, because I got oxtails <laughs> in there, too. I do. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm just saying, these are things that I love. A lot mm -hmm. of the recipes came up from my family, but then as I grew in that aspect, mm -hmm. you know, I begin to uh, create new dishes okay. uh, and then um, just cook the things that I enjoy. So I have brown stew chicken in there. I have brown oh, okay. stew oxtails. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I, I do. I have a, a nice peach and a fig salad that's in there. I have yeah crab cakes. It, it's about 100 recipes in this book. Check yes. this book out. Yeah, there's to... 100 recipes yeah. in the book. Okay. Absolutely. Where did your love for cooking come from? It's just something that my mom and I shared together. So, mm -hmm. you know, we would kind of get together and hang out and, you know, kind of catch up and that's that personal bonding time that her and I shared mm -hmm. and she always made it very fun and never like it was a a task so right. I didn't really feel like oh you know you know some people are like I don't feel like doing this it's yeah. gonna take forever I'm tired already just looking at the stove but it has to be your passion because like be. I, food is not necessarily my passion really so no it's not my passion um I enjoy I enjoy looking at it and I enjoy eating I'll make a few meals but it's not my passion but I have a girlfriend that it's her passion yes. and I can tell the difference when she it's almost like art like yeah. she really really loves it let's yeah. make sure that's there she loves it and so I think that it's it comes across differently if that's your passion so yeah. this seems to be one of your passions but it definitely is but I do want everyone to know that you can do it like you mm -hmm. don't have to be a, a uber eats person or a postmates person all the time right um, and, I, and I also utilize those apps but I prefer cooking yeah well it's and more health it's healthier for you yes. it's better for you to know what you're making yes and it seems like I'm gonna try it out I'm gonna 
let you guys know. But it, and try it, one of these recipes. Yes, but I have I have uh, recipes in there that's for the person who's just beginning to okay, the intermediate okay. person and to the person who is really advanced. So mm -hmm. it's definitely something in there for everyone. Okay. And not only is it a cookbook, like I have life lessons that I've also written okay. into this book as well. Okay. So you know things that I've also I've learned in the kitchen mm -hmm. that I take it and incorporate it to my everyday life. Right. Well, that's uh, that's interesting because I would think after going through you went through a lot. We saw you go through a lot. Yeah. On Married to Medicine. Yes. Um, that's kind of where out to Married to Medicine. <laughs> that's kind of where national audiences got to know you. And I think any woman, we, we've all it just watching other women go through things that we've all gone through. Mm -hmm. Heartbreak, dealing with friendships that sometimes seem supportive, sometimes may not seem supportive. How were you able to handle dealing with going through a divorce? Going well, going through finding out your husband was you know, not, you know, doing husbandly things <laughs> and then going through a divorce all in a public platform, yeah. all while still trying to, you know, maintain your sanity yeah. and still look fabulous and yeah. still work and keep going. How were you able to do that? Um, just knowing that I'm resilient, mm -hmm. just being resilient. I think that definitely helped me a great deal. And knowing to, you know, that Married to Medicine afforded me the opportunity to kind of shed light on things that women go through on a mm -hmm. daily basis. But to also let them know how they can come through on the other side. Right. So while at times it was very, very tough, mm -hmm. when I get the DMs and the emails and everyone, you know, um, saying how I've helped to change their life and how I've inspired them and how I've motivated them uh, to take to pay closer attention more to themselves mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. know to not to actually set standards and, right. and, and what they want for themselves personally and their right. love life mm -hmm. and to you know be bold enough to to move forward. Right. And so those are the times when I'm I'm very blessed to say you know what even though it was tough for me at times there was still something good that came out of it right. for other people what do you think was the for hardest the women what is what was the hardest thing for you to deal with with the dissolution of your marriage uh god the hardest thing for me to to, to really deal with is is the fact that i was I had to make the decision to get a divorce. Mm -hmm. That was very tough. Yeah, because you never tough. saw yourself getting no, a divorce. No, 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 no. I, I never got married to get a divorce. You know, mm -hmm. I thought it was something that I would, he and I will be going to our grave still married. Yeah. Uh, and so that was very disappointing for me, for right. sure. Uh, it's very interesting because you know, people have their, their opinions and, you know, we as women, we can be quite judgmental mm -hmm. uh, towards one another. And I, I could remember just, you know, women seeing what I was going through on television, but I would still have some women say, well, if you just would have gave him a kid, then, you know, none of this would be happening. Wow. Or if you would have gave him a child, then that could have fixed everything. Yeah. And I got to tell you, that's the farthest thing from the truth. Right. And I, I think one well, thing. Well, you know, anyone that knows, knows that children do not fix marriages. No, <laughs> children don't. do not fix marriages. I think sometimes people assume strong friends aren't hurting. Yeah. So while you look very pulled together, I know anyone going through that is hurting. Do yeah. you think that people assume that you might not have been as hurt as you were? Um, you know, I don't understand how they could assume that, you know, when you're seeing a person doing everything in their can in their power to try to save their marriage, you know, mm -hmm. the marital focus group and, and we, we saw the whole debacle with that, with the mm -hmm. falling out on the floor and the mm -hmm. foaming at the mouth and all of that. But it was very important for me that I, I really tried to, to, to save my marriage and yeah. and so I, I don't think that they thought that I wasn't as hurt because those tears are, are real. Yeah. You know, you just, yeah. uh, no one pinched me and made me cry. Made you cry on camera. You know, my yeah. heart was hurting. Yeah. So that's different. Um, I think that people sometimes get caught up in the show of it all, mm -hmm. you know, because it's on a, it's a national television right. show. And, and, and hits or ratings, which is confrontation and things like that. And I think people just thought, you know, yes, Quad is a real person, but this is entertaining. Right. And they got caught up in the entertainment component mm -hmm. versus really identifying that I'm a person going through who, who's painful. really going through something and was um, really fighting every day to try to maintain my strength and, yeah. and, 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 and really figure out wh how, how I was gonna work through that. You mentioned children and um, we gotta go. No, no. Yeah. He, he said it. He did. He did. What you say? Okay. Oh. Okay. So, All right. I'll go back. Okay. You mentioned you mentioned people saying that children would fix the marriage. Mm -hmm. um, you also mentioned that you had no intention of ever getting a divorce. So I'm sure children were part of what you were looking forward to <laughs> as well, right? Absolutely. Like I still want to have kids now. And mm -hmm. and what's most interesting, you know, I'm getting older. You know, mm -hmm. I'm 38 years old right now, mm -hmm. and you know now I'm faced with 
being 38, yeah. on the verge of becoming 39. Hearing that clock is ticking. <laughs> you know, <laughs> not having yeah. a husband anymore, mm -hmm. but still having that deep yearning yeah, for a child, a to mm -hmm. be a mom. And so, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I could remember during the holidays, it was very tough for me mm -hmm. because, you know, people tend to think that holidays are very happy and, you know, it's a good time and, you know, there's love and there's family and, you know, it's a joyous occasion. But this year was a little different for me mm -hmm. because I think the reality of my life yeah. and where I am now really took a toll on me. Yeah. And so it became very tough. And so I'm like, you, you don't have the daughter that you want, you yeah. know, and you don't have the man that can help you get the daughter, sure, <laughs> you yeah. know. And yeah. so... You know, I begin to look at what's my other options out there. So mm -hmm. I've made a decision that I'm, I'm definitely going to freeze my eggs. Right. Yeah. Well, I love that. I love that. I think that women, I, we were talking a little bit before we started. I remember feeling a sense of guilt and, and emptiness because I started early. I got mm -hmm. married, had kids early. There were so many women that didn't. And a lot of times they made me feel bad about my choices. And then I see women that now are in their age, later age and they haven't had children. As women, I think we just need to do a more of supporting each other, yeah. right? And yeah. realizing that we all get to different places at different times, sure. and there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong. Nothing. But supporting each other as opposed <coughs> to being a, uh, you know, just adding to the, to adding insult to injury, I yeah. think, you know? Yeah. So I yeah, applaud you for, for coming out and saying that because I think anyone that wants to be a mother deserves to be a mother. Absolutely. And let me tell you, I... Right now, that's one of my greatest focal points. Mm -hmm. Okay. To, to, to be honest with you, so <laughs> okay. uh, as soon as I leave here, I actually have an appointment. Wow. For consultation. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So it's 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 definitely something that I I hope that we're able to capture mm -hmm. uh, this season, season eight of Married to Medicine. You yeah. know, because well, I'm most sure. importantly, even just with your life, we want yes. to wish you much success. We'll have to have you come back yes. and talk more about that process because I know there's a lot of women, especially African American career women that are looking to this yeah. as an option. Yeah, and I'm willing to share it openly step by step because mm -hmm. I know that it, we hear it all the time, freezing eggs, but we don't understand the process. Exactly what, and some you of know. us have no idea. I also in. too want to tell everyone to follow me on all of my yes. social media platforms at Absolutely Quad. I'm going to be documenting everything that I'm um, on the, that's on the horizon for mm -hmm. me with the process of freezing my eggs. So oh, we definitely, we definitely want to have you come back and talk about yeah. that. Yeah, definitely, definitely have to ever come back. Pick up a copy of Cooking with Miss Quad. This live, been... laugh, love, and, and eat. eat. And eat. Thank you guys for tuning in. This has been Let's Get Crystal Clear. We've got Crystal Clear with Miss Quad, married to medicine, sister circle TV. She's a sister girl that's doing it. We support you, Miss Quad. You. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much baby. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.